What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be ranking every single NASCAR Cup Series points paying race from the worst to the best. So anyways, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. In 36, in last position, we have the goal bowling at the Glen at Watkins Glen International Speedway. This is not only the worst race of 2023, but this, in my opinion, is one of the worst road course races I have ever seen, and also the worst Watkins Glen race I have ever watched as a fan. Nothing happened in this race. I think for the last 35 laps after the caution came out, there was not a single change in position, and William Byron completely dominated. I think the next car still needs work on the road courses for sure. I was not a big fan of this race, and I think it was for sure the worst race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. In the 35th position, we have the Toyota Save Mar 350 at Sonoma Raceway. There's not a lot of negative things I want to say about this race. There just really wasn't a lot of action that took place in this race. Sure, you had a really good pass for the lead between Kyle Busch and Martin Trish Jr. near the end. You also had some good racing throughout the portion of the race. I think Fox's coverage wasn't that great, unfortunately. But I don't think there really was a ton of action in this race. Sonoma Raceway historically has not put on the greatest racing in the world. And unfortunately, I don't think the race is very, very good. It sits 35th on this list. In a 34 position, we have the Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Kind of similar to Sonoma, there really wasn't a lot that happened. I think this is probably the worst intermediate race that we have seen in the next-gen era. Historically, next-gen races with the next-gen car have been very, very good at intermediate tracks. Unfortunately, this race was not one of those. Not a ton of happened. There was a little bit that happened in Sage Street, but other than that, there was not a ton of good racing in this event. It was one of my lower-ranked races. He had a good finish, too, but unfortunately, there just wasn't a ton of action that took place at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. In a 33rd position, we have the Am Better Health 400 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Compared to the summer race, which was way better, the spring race at Atlanta Motor Speedway was very, very long, very, very strong out, and not much happened. Stage 1, not a single, really any changes for the lead. Stage 2 got a little better, and I will say Stage 3 was actually pretty good for a majority of Stage number 3. But for the most part, you can make up the Stage 3 from what happened from Stage 1 and Stage number 2. Not a ton happened this race, unfortunately, and I think it was one of the more lackluster races of the 2023 season, which is a shame, because I think it's one of the worst Atlanta races we've seen since they went to the new configuration. Nonetheless, it sits 33rd on the list. In the 32nd position, we have the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. Now, I think a lot of people know my thoughts on Texas Motor Speedway. This is my least favorite track on the NASCAR circuit. But I will say this race was way better than last year's race here and way better than the All-Star race in 2022 as well. And one of the best races in the new Texas configuration. However, I still am not a big fan of this track, and I don't think the race was that great. There were good moments for sure. You had good battles throughout the field at times, but unfortunately, I think it was just one of the more lackluster races still in 2023, which isn't a surprise considering Texas doesn't historically put on good racing, but it wasn't the worst race of 2023, and it was better than the 2022 edition. In the 31st position, we have the United Reynolds Work United 500 at Phoenix Raceway. This race was better than last year's spring race and the championship race in 2022. This was the debut of the new uh, next-gen short track package that came in, and I will say it did improve the racing slightly. However, I've kind of said this about Phoenix Raceway. This isn't the greatest track in the world. I don't think the racing was fantastic. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't fantastic either. That being said, it was better than the last couple times we've been here. I just don't think this race was very, very good. There wasn't a lot of intriguing moments outside of seeing Kevin Harvick have probably the best car at the end of the race, which Kevin Harvick probably should have won this race before that caution came out. Nonetheless, in my opinion, this is a very, very uneventful race, and it sits in 31st position. In the 30th position, we have the NOCO 400 at Martinsville Speedway. This race was better than I thought it was going to turn out to be. It wasn't great by any stretch of imagination. You really could not pass. And one of the biggest reasons is because tire rubber was not being laid down on the racetrack. Even though it was like 60 or 70 degrees at the racetrack, I think when this race is going on, it still was not a very good race. Again, I think we all know the short track package right now is not very good with the next-gen car. It's just kind of uneventful. Tires really meant nothing. I mean, Joey Lugano was at 1.30 for this race, and he finished second. It was cool to see my favorite driver, Kyle Larson, win. But again, I didn't think the race was very, very good, and it sits 30th on my list for 2023. 
In the 29th position, we have the Bank of America Robo 400 at the Charlotte Robo. Now, I would love to see the regular Charlotte Oval come back in 2024, 2025. But I will say this race at the Charlotte Robo was way better than last year's race in 2022. Tire wear did matter in this event. If you did have fresher tires, especially in your early run, you were able to get up to the front. And you had an underdog winner in A.J. Allmendinger as well. And he had an intriguing finish between William Byron and A.J. Allmendinger as well. But it wasn't the greatest race in the world, in my opinion, but it's definitely way better. I still want to see the Charlotte Oval come back in the future, but I don't think this race was that awful. It wasn't great. It wasn't awful. It was just decent, and it sits 29th on my list. In the 28th position, we have the Cookout 400 at Richmond Raceway. I think this race is a little bit underrated in my opinion, but it still wasn't the greatest race in the world. But I'll say one thing that kind of salvaged this race just a little bit for me was the fact that there was a lot of strategy, especially on the long run. And you got to see a lot of underdog teams perform very well. You got to see Bragg Zoss and Chris Busher do well, and you also got to see Bo Walls and Tyler Reddick from 20 through 11 Racing dominate the early portion of the race. It was really cool to see Chris Busher pick up the victory. But overall, this race wasn't the most exciting in the world. It was decent in my opinion, but it wasn't the greatest race in the world. And it's his 28th on my list because Richmond historically is not the greatest racetrack in the world. In a 27th position, we have the Bass Pro Shops Night Race at Bristol Motor Speedway. I'm going to say that this race was actually not as bad as I think people remember it. It wasn't great by any stretch of imagination. I think it wasn't as good as last year's race in 2022, but it was a still a decent race in my honest opinion. I will say that the next-gen cars issues really came up at Bristol Motor Speedway. Remember, they don't run the short track package at Bristol because of the high banks, if I'm not mistaken. So it really, I think, did affect this car just quite a bit. It wasn't the greatest race in the world, though. It wasn't awful, though. I would say it was okay. I'm going to put this race 27th on my list because it wasn't as bad as I think a ton of people remember it. In a 26th position, we have the Enjoy Illinois 300 at Gateway International Speedway, also known as Worldwide Technology. This honestly was a pretty solid race in my opinion. I actually went to the 2022 edition, and I think the 2022 race was okay. I think the 2023 race was better than 2022. We got to see Kyle Busch get his third and final victory of the 2023 season in that race. And we got to see some pretty good racing up front, especially on the restarts. Now, I do think on the long runs, it was still very difficult to pass. But historically, Gateway is a track that is really difficult to pass. I still thought it was a pretty solid race overall, though. I absolutely thought it was a good, decent race. And I would definitely put it still in the bottom half of the list. But it definitely is better than anything people give it credit for. I'm going to say this race is the 26th best race on my list. In the 25th position, we have the Xfinity 500 at Martinsville Speedway. This, in my opinion, is the best race at Martinsville in the next-gen car. I love the fact that you could pass with this car, though it was still very, very difficult to pass, and the short track issue still came up. I think this, like I said, was one of the better short track races we've seen in the next-gen era of this car, or the Gen 7 era. The tire wear was majorly prevalent, of course, it being 80 degrees at Mars, which is historically not a thing you normally see. The last time it was that warm was 10 years ago. You had a lot of tire rubber on the track, which created a second lane. And I think it provided a much more intriguing and a really solid race. Again, Mars is a track that I think is really, really great. The car still needs work on the short tracks for sure. But I thought this race is very solid considering the standards of the next gen car on short tracks. I thought it was pretty solid and pretty good considering the standards of the next gen car. I thought it was overall a pretty solid race. In a 24 position, we have the Crayon 301 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I'm going to be honest, this race was not as good as last year's race in 2022. Sure, he had a pretty exciting finish near the end between, uh, I think, Joey Logano trying to catch Mark Trix Jr. and also Kyle Larson closing in. And this is definitely a better race than Mark Trix Jr. dominated for sure, but it still wasn't the most exciting race in the world. When Mark Trix Jr. dominates races, they're not the most exciting in the world, but it still wasn't a bad race. I think the tire actually worked really, really well here. You did have multiple groups that came into play, and there was definitely prevalent passing throughout the field as well. I think it was a decent race in the world. It wasn't the greatest race in the world, but it was not a bad race on a Monday. It was a decent race overall. In a 23rd position, we have the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at Phoenix Raceway. 
This race went a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And had we had all the racing we had in stage number three throughout the whole entire race, this race would probably be in the top 10 or top 15 on my list. However, the reason it's a little bit lower is because stage one was a little bit lackluster and stage two in the first half <laughs> especially was kind of lackluster. But you had really good battles throughout, especially say end of stage one where Kevin Harvick's trying to catch William Byron. You had stage two, the battle between Chastain and Harvick in the beginning of the run. And stage three was so fun to see Ross Chastain trying to hold off hard charging Ryan Blaney and Martin Trex Jr. And you got to see a really good battle between Ryan Blaney and Kyle Larson as well. It is a memorable championship race. It's one of the more memorable championship races we've seen in recent years. I still think, like I said, the short track package needs work. But again, I think it was overall a pretty solid race. Not great, but a solid race overall with an 8 out of 10 score for me. It was a solid race, and it sits 23rd on my list. In the 22nd position, we have the Food City Dirt Race at Bristol Dirt. Now, I am going to miss seeing the Dirt Race at Bristol next year in 2024. And I think this race was decent, but I think for a lot of people, we have put this race really high up on the list. I'm going to be honest, this race is a little bit overrated. The reason why I have it a little bit lower than other races this year is because of a lot of the crashes. I think there were too many wrecks and too many crashes that took place in this race. There were, what, like 10 or 11 cautions in like a 250 lap race, which is kind of normal for a dirt race. But yeah, NASCAR being inconsistent with the calls, and they threw the caution on the white flag, which kind of hurt the outcome of the event for me. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was a good race, in my opinion, but it wasn't the greatest race in the world. And for me, it says 22nd on my list. In the 21st position, we have the Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway. This race, in my opinion, was pretty good, but wasn't the greatest race in the world. I think the next gen car, unfortunately, is affected at Darlington Raceway overall as well. But you did have the intriguing stuff that was going on throughout the race. You had a four-way battle for the lead at one point between Kyle Larson, Rosh Hussein, Kyle Busch, and Mark Trick Jr. at one point in this event. And he also had the pretty solid finish near the end between Kyle Larson and Chastain getting into it. And then, of course, he had Chastain and Larson wrecking each other, which did create a little bit of excitement and a ton of talking points. It was a solid race. wasn't the greatest race in the world. And it says 21st on my list. In the 20th position, we have the HighPoint.com 400 at Pocono Raceway. This is one of the best Pocono races I have watched as a fan. The next-gen car has made Pocono Raceway a hot spot track and has really saved Pocono, in my opinion. The last couple of years, we've seen a lot of crowds, and you had a lot of intriguing moments that happened throughout this race. You had drivers like Kyle Larson were really good in this event, but then him and Denny Hamill got into it, and then he saw, I think it was Denny Hamill who went on to win the race, and he had a lot of fans booing Denny Hamill as well. It was a pretty good event overall. It wasn't the greatest event overall, but I think it was a pretty good event, and it was a good race to me. It sits 20th on my list. In the 19th position, we have the Worth 400 at Dover International Speedway. In my opinion, this is the best race that Mark Trix Jr. won all year, and I think this is one of the more underrated races of 2023. There was a lot of good moments that happened in this race. Did it get strung out of times for sure? Yes, absolutely. But Dover is a track that always doesn't put on the greatest racing in the world. But I think it was a pretty interesting and intriguing race, especially throughout. You had a good finish near the end. You had Truex had to get by Ryan Blaney, Rosh Hussein trying to run down Mark Trix Jr. You had Rosh Hussein cause, of course, a wreck between that cost Kyle Larson a shot at the victory. But I think it was overall a pretty solid and a very, very good race. And I would definitely put it almost in the top half for sure. It sits 19th on the list. In the 18th position, we have the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. Now, how we just had the first couple stages of the race and until like the last 10 or 15 laps, this race probably in the top 15 or probably even the top 12. However, the reason I have this race sitting in 18th position is because the ending of this race. I just can't get over the fact that the ending of this race was completely horrendous. You had guys sending it five and six wide. You had beat between Alex Bowman and Daniel Suarez in this race. You also got to see a couple of really cool drivers like Jordan Taylor coming in race, which was really fun. But you just had a lot of chaos at the end that affected the outcome. Now, Kyle Busch did praise Tyler Reddick for the way he got raced. And it was really cool to see Tyler to get his first victory and seeing Kurt Busch in the booth was really fun to watch as well. I just didn't think the race was the most exciting. It was a pretty good race until I loved the natural flow of the race until the end. The chaos did affect it. But I still think it was a good race until the end. But it wasn't the greatest race in the world. It sits 18th on my list. 
In a 17 position, we have the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard at the Indianapolis Road Course. This race, in my opinion, was very, very intriguing and very good. The last years, in my opinion, 2021 and 2022, I'm going to be honest with you guys, were not very good races. I think 2021 was okay until the crash fest happened, and then 2022 just turned into a complete wreck fest. You had a really tricky battle, though, between three playoff drivers who were, of course, trying to make the playoffs. That being Michael McDowell, Daniel Suarez, and Chase Selly, who are all looking for their first win of 2023. And the leader never got farther than two or three seconds out in front, and it was closing up near the end, and it almost created a really cool storyline with Chase Selly trying to get in. But we got to see Michael Medal pick up his second career victory. It was a very solid race overall, one of the better road course races for sure of 2023. And nonetheless, I thought it was a pretty good race. In the 16th position, we have the Grand Park 220 at the Chicago Street Course. I think this race, a lot of people have probably in the top five and top ten races of 2023. And if, it, if you want to say it <laughs> because of its impact, I would agree with you. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think this race is a little bit overrated. Now, don't get me wrong, seeing Shane Van Gisbergen pick up the win was really exciting, really fun, and really, really engaging. And that was really cool to see because we now can see Shane Van Gisbergen race in NASCAR next year. However, this race did have some boring moments for sure, especially in the beginning. But you had a lot of wrecks that happened, which kept the intrigue in, and it was the most watched race, I think, of the outside of the Daytona 500 this year. It was a good race for sure. It wasn't a great race overall, but I think it was really cool to see it. You kept your basic eyes on. It was fun to watch the strategy near the end of the race, but I thought it was a decent race. It wasn't a great race, and it sits 16th on my list. In a 15th position, we have the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. Now, I think this race is one of the more overhated races of 2023. Was it the greatest Super Speedway race in the world? No, but honestly, it was a pretty intriguing race. You had a lot of underdogs up front. You had Brad Zosky up there for quite a bit of time. And you also had Bubba Wallace, who, in my opinion, had the best car in this race. And we also got to see Kyle Busch pick up his second, second win with Rich Schultz Racing in 2023. Was it fantastic? No, but it was still a pretty good race, in my opinion. And he had a lot of intriguing things that went on. This race, in my opinion, sits in 15th place. In the 14th position, we have the 2023 Daytona 500. This race also is one of the more overhated races of 2023, and I think a big reason for that is the ending of this race. And personally, I don't blame a lot of people for overhating this race a little bit because I think a lot of people really want to see Kyle Busch pick up the win in the Daytona 500, which Kyle Busch on lap 200 was the leader of the Daytona 500. Unfortunately for Kyle Busch, we had Daniel Suarez spin out, and it caused a lot of chaos near the end, and he had a big wreck that happened on the last lap where this race ended under yellow. That being said, it was a decent race overall. Pretty good race, if you ask me, until all the chaos happened. And I thought it was a pretty solid 2023 Daytona 500. In the 13th position, we have the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond Raceway. A lot of people say that the Dick's Finney 500 Martinsville was the best short track race. I completely disagree. I think this was actually the best short track race of 2023. There was a lot of intriguing stuff that happened throughout. The long runs are really engaging. You had a lot of great passing throughout the field. And the ending, especially on the long run, you had Denny Hamlin up front, William Byron and Mark Trickson up front, I thought was really engaging and really, really exciting and really fun as well. I think it was one of the better races. You had a lot of great strategy. You got to see Kyle Larson pick up, I think, his first or second win. Actually, his first win in 2023 in this event. And I think it was overall a pretty good and pretty awesome race. Loved it a lot, and was definitely my favorite short track race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. In the 12th position, we have the Ally 400 at Nashville Super Speedway. We have now been in Nashville for three years, and this, in my opinion, was the best NASCAR Cup Series race at Nashville Super Speedway. They had to move this race up a little bit earlier because of the weather coming in, which I don't think the weather really came in. It's about an hour after the race concluded. But they made the right decision to move it up. And it was a very intriguing and a very engaging race. We got to see Ross Chastain pick up, I believe, his first victory of the 2023 season. And Ross Chastain had a really great car as well. Seeing my dad sit next to me watching that race was really fun and engaging as well. I think it was the best race in Nashville every year. It's gotten better, and I think 2024 could even get better. The next car race really good here, and I thought it was a very exciting and really good race overall. In the 11th position, we have the Firekeepers Casino 400 
at Michigan International Speedway. This is the best Michigan race I have seen since the repave came around, especially in the first and second, and really in the first half of this race. Especially in the first half, you had a lot of wrecks and a lot of crashes that took place and a lot of great racing as well. And I thought the finish was extremely intriguing between Chris Buescher and Martin Shurex Jr. Now, Tyler Reddick would have been in the mix for sure had he not had his, those issues on pit road that cost him a shot at the win. But I thought it was a very intriguing and really good race at Michigan. Again, I don't think the track historically has been the greatest in the world. But I think it was a very good race overall, and I definitely would put it near the top 10. It was a good race, and it sits 11th on my list. And it was cool to see Chris Buescher pick up the victory. In a 10th position... We have the South Point 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Compared to the spring race, this race was way better. Las Vegas Motor Speedway is a temperature-sensitive track. When it's warm as it was this year at Las Vegas, the racing tends to be a lot better. And I think it put on a very exciting and a really, really good show. You had great racing up front for the lead, especially on the long runs. You had at one point for like 20 or 30 laps a battle for the race lead. Yes, dirty air was extremely prevalent. That's something that needs to be worked on. But I think it was overall a pretty exciting and a good race. And I definitely think it was one of the better Vegas races I've seen in a while. I think both races last year were good. But I think this was still as good as last year's races in 2022. Nonetheless, it sits number 10 on my list. In the ninth position, we have the Cookout Southern 500 at Darlington National Speedway, of course, the Southern 500. I think a lot of people kind of were hit or miss with this race, and I actually thought the Southern 500 this year was really intriguing and very, very fun to watch. The Southern 500, in my opinion, is the most over, uh, is basically the most underrated crown jewel race in NASCAR. I think, it, of course, it used to actually be the most honorable crown jewel race back when NASCAR was in its infancy. It was a very fun, engaging race, in my opinion. It was cool to see Kyle Larson finally pick up his first Southern 500 win, holding out the hard-charging Tyler Reddick and Chris Busch or William Byron near the end of the race. I think it was a very exciting and great race overall, and it currently sits number nine on my list. It was a very good Southern 500, and I think it was even better than last year's Southern 500. In the eighth position... We have the Forever 400 at home, said Miami Speedway. This race was definitely better than last year's race. Don't get me wrong, I think last year's race was completely overhated, but this race, in my opinion, was definitely better. Sure, you had Kyle Larson dominate a good portion, but I remember the first 20 to 30 laps of stage number one, we had four or five guys battling for the race lead. You had Bubba Wallace lead at points in the race. You had Mark Trix Jr. lead. You had William Byron lead early. You had Brad Gislossi lead for a good portion, and you had some great racing. Then near the end of stage number two, you had a fantastic finish. I think this is a really good race. I still wish Homestead was hoping the championship, hosting the championship because I think this would be a really good championship race. I hope it gets it back in the near future. Nonetheless, I thought this is a really exciting and a very good race at Homestead Miami Speedway. As assists, number eight on the list. It was cool to see Cristobal pick up the victory as well. In the seventh position, we have the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas Speedway. This, in my opinion, was not as good as the spring race this year, but this still was a very good race. Stage 1 had a lot of intriguing moments. Stage 2 had a great intriguing moment when you had guys on older tires trying to hold up guys on fresher tires. And he had a great finish in stage number 2. Now, stage number 3 did get strung out a little bit. I will agree with most people on that. But I will say the racing, for the most part, was really, really good and really fun to watch. I liked it a lot. It was a great race, in my opinion. I wish I was there this year. Unfortunately, could not make it to this race for 2023. Nonetheless, it was a very good race, and I absolutely enjoyed it. And it sits number 7 on my list as the 7th best race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. In the 6th position, we have the Yellowwood 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. Now, originally I said that this is one of the three or four best races of 2023. I'm going to take that back a little bit. I thought this race definitely was really, really good for sure. And definitely one of the better super speed races we have seen. We saw a lot of three wide in this race and a lot of two wide as well. But what made this race so cool and really intriguing is there weren't a lot of big wrecks that took place. You had drivers basically using their heads and using their brains. Again, they all wrecked near the end of the event. He had like a little bit of a big wreck happen with about 20 laps to go. But overall, I think the race was really fun and really enjoyable this year. I think it, we were finally starting to see the next-gen car gel on Super Speedways greatly. I thought it was overall an engaging and a really good race. In the number five position, we have the Quaker State 400 at Atlanta Super Speedway. 
This is the first race in the Atlanta, New Atlanta area that I have actually enjoyed from start to finish. Sure, the beginning a little bit iffy, but after the beginning, first like 20, 30 laps, this race in the intensity completely heated up. This was really the first time we got to see three wide work at Atlanta of all places. You saw three wide throughout the pack at times. You saw great racing up front, guys basically making slingshot moves to get a lead on the inside, in the outside. The reason this race isn't higher is because it got range short, unfortunately. But if this race had gone all the way through, this could have been contender for race of the year. I think Atlanta has finally delivered with the next gen, with basically with the new super speedway style of racing. I think it was a really fun and a very, very good race at Atlanta Motor Speedway. In the fourth position, we have the Palo Casino 400 at Auto Club Speedway. This race was not as good as the 2022 race, but it's still a very fun and a great race in my opinion. And we also got to see Kyle Busch pick up his first win with Richard Childress Racing as well. God, it is a shame to see a Kyle Busch basically. God, it's such a shame to see that this track is shutting down and they're turning into a short track because the next gen car in the final two years here put on some really fun and very good races overall. Again, it's a shame that there's no longer going to be a race here anymore at the, because I think it was a very good race. It did get strung out at the end, which affected the score a little bit for me, but it was a very good race. It would have been cool to see Chase like, try to close in, but I thought it was still a very good race, and it sits number four on this list. In the third position, we have the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona International Speedway. This, in my opinion, is the best super speedway race in the next-gen era. From start to finish, it was engaging. You had a little bit of a strong out at the beginning, but once you got to the end of stage one in stage two, there was a point for like 20 or 30 laps in a row that they were three by three by three by three by three, and they were putting on fantastic racing overall. I thought the finish was really cool. It was cool to see the teamwork between Chris Buescher and Brad Kozlowski near the end of the race. Of course, we did see the Ryan Priest flip, which was extremely scary. But it was still an awesome, a fantastic race. And the Super Speedway Racing was incredible in this event. I love this race. It was a fantastic one. And it is the best race of best Super Speedway race I have for sure seen in the next-gen era. In the second and runner-up position, we have the 2023 Coca-Cola 600. Just like last year's race in 2022, this race once again delivered. And the Coca-Cola 600 is truly back as one of the best crown jewel races. Again, it wasn't as good as last year's race, but it was very close to being as good as last year's. You had great racing throughout. You had tempers flare in this race between Chase Selling and Denny Hamlin. And you got to see Ryan Blaney end a winless streak at 58 or 59 race winless streak in the NASCAR Cup Series in the Coca-Cola 600. I thought it was a fantastic race overall. It was an amazing racing, a lot of side-by-side, a lot of comers and goers, a lot of different underdogs up front. You saw Zane Smith get his first career top 10, which that was really fun to watch. And nonetheless, I think it was an awesome and a great race. It did get right into late to the next day, which kind of hurt a little bit, but it was still on Memorial Day, and I thought it was a very fun and fantastic race. And it sits as the runner-up position. And finally, the best race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season, I think y'all know what it is, is the 2023 Advent Health 400 at Kansas International Speedway. This, in my opinion, is not only the best race of 2023, but it is the best Kansas race I have ever seen since watching the sport. I know a lot of people say the Charlotte Motor Speedway is the best mile and a half on the circuit, and for the most part, I agree. But I can't take away from the fact how great of a track Kansas Speedway is. This race, from start to finish, was amazing. You had a lot of side-by-side. You had a lot of great racing. You had a fight after the race between Ross Hussain and uh, Noah Gregson. And you had a lot of side-by-side racing and great racing throughout. And on top of that as well, you had a fantastic finish between Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson trying to hold off Denny Hamlin, and Denny Hamlin trying to beat Kyle Larson. I know a lot of people had their opinions on the way Denny Hamlin raced Kyle Larson, but I think Denny Hamlin did nothing wrong in this situation. It was a fun, a fantastic, and a great race. And to me, it is the best race of the 2023 season. In my opinion, one of the 10 best NASCAR races in the history of the sport. It's in the top 10 for sure favorite races I've watched, and it's one of the best NASCAR races of all time. And for me, it's the best race of 2023. So, those are my race rankings for the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notifications on so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. 
Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as part of my page as well. Let's go to below that and comment your thoughts below on today's video. What were your favorite races of 2023? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, there's either going to be a NASCAR news video on the channel or there's going to be a video of the top 20 drivers to watch out for for the 2024 NASCAR season. If we do have a NASCAR news video tomorrow, that top 20 drivers video will come out later this week. Over the weekend, there's going to be a 2025 NASCAR Silly Season Predictions video, and i got a lot of other content dropping. And then, of course, next week, team previews are going to start dropping for 2024. Like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.